In this lesson, we're going to build a thumping blues groove one step at a time. Let's get to it. John here with the Blues Guitar Institute and this is your Tuesday Blues where every week we break down cool acoustic blues concepts and get them into your playing so that you can play the music you love. That's what it's all about and right now we're going to cover that driving beat that you just heard. Let's build this thing step by step. We're going to do a nice quarter note pulse. It sounds kind of like a kick drum just by dropping the palm of your hand down on the bridge. Now this does not take a lot of force. Don't try to crush your guitar. I'm certainly not tapping this wildly or loudly or hard or anything like that. Don't break your guitar, all right? But we're going to do this and count to four. And then on the end of one and the end of three, we'll drop in a bass note plucked out with the thumb. And that bass note is going to be the A, so the open fifth string. Two, three, four, one, and two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four. Now it's time to add in the chords, which is a little A7 shape on beats two and three. One and two, three and four. 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 Now let's spice that up. And now we we're kind of missing something. We need a little tail on the end of this thing. You can alternate that, change it around a little bit, add a few notes, really spice this up. All right. Now let's see how this holds up we change chords. Let's move into a D9 around the fifth fret. be helpful to you if we kind of zoom in and take a look at a couple of the techniques that we're using to get this thing into your playing. First up, we're on the fretboard on B2, we hit that A7 chord. This is the shape that we're using, but how I'm hitting it is really important. So I'm coming down, kind of keeping that motion happening, and I'm using the flat part of my fingernails. I'm not plucking, I'm not doing a brush up with the tip of my finger, I'm coming down and hitting these three strings with really these three fingers, the fingernails here, they're just kind of like locked together as a group. So I'm not really paying attention to which finger is, is striking the strings. I'm just kind of using the, the broad side of the fingernail here to kind of scratch across those. And then of course we added that little bit of spice on the fretboard by letting it hang and then flattening the entire chord by half step and then coming back up. And the cool thing is, when we came back down, we also came back down in the same manner, but we kind of choked those strings out. We didn't let them ring. It kind of added to this sort of closing down effect and, and really kind of helped the rhythm a little bit. Right, so I am scratching through, but I'm also kind of laying my, my hand down to stop the strings from ringing there, okay? That, that can be a little bit of a tricky bit uh, to get down, but... 
but as soon as I'm scratching through, I'm kind of coming down with my thumb, with my hand, and stopping those strings from ringing, and that kind of creates that nice little rhythmic moment. So hopefully that helps you. And then also, this little piece, that little tail has a little bit going on. What I'm doing is basically the same when it comes to how I'm picking this. But a couple things that you really need to know. First off, I'm muting everything that's not supposed to be played here. I've got my thumb on the sixth string so that when I come back down to hit that fifth string, as I do this little tag, that it's not gonna ring. I'm not gonna thump it and you know, get some clashing notes there. It's muted with my thumb. And then this finger is also laying across the fourth string to mute that out. This finger is ready to handle that A, which we're going to play, and then I'm laying back gently over the top two strings so that they don't sound either. So while this looks like there's not a lot going on, I'm muting everything that I don't want to play because when you're strumming really aggressively like this, and you're just kind of coming down with, with a very imprecise kind of motion, it's really easy to hit some notes that are not going to sound so great. We want to subtract that from the playing, and the best way to do that is to mute out anything that you don't want to sound, all right? So all we're doing with the little tail is something like this, and I am plucking up when I hit that A usually. I'm getting my index finger in between the strings and plucking up with a little bit of an attack. You kind of hear that snap sound to it as I plug up. Now, the string snap, it can sound like you're about to break the string, you know, but what you're really doing is kind of plucking a little more out and away from the guitar, and that causes the string to kind of slap back really abruptly against the fretboard, and you get that pop sound. So it doesn't take a lot of force, just like we talked about with this not taking a lot of force. This popping doesn't take a lot of force. You shouldn't, you know, crunch your guitar or um, break any strings doing this. And keep in mind, you can change up that little tag. I do some combination of hammering on to the third fret, that minor third of A, and then up to the, the octave A, or can do it backwards. You can really come up with a lot of different variations, even working with just these four notes here. So have some fun with that. But then we moved into the chords, which have these kind of sliding ninth effects happening here. So it's really just, this is a D9, so it's kind of like a D7, but we've got the note directly above the octave, the E in this case. So we'll fret it like this, and it's a D9, and it works really great to kind of slide around the same way we did with our A7. And we really kind of kept the, the rhythm the same. And of course you can alter it and have some fun, take some creative and rhythmic license with this. But we really kind of kept that idea, that, that rhythmic idea going here. We didn't add the tail. We really want these chords to kind of say something here. So we just kind of stabbed them a little bit. And of course we did the same thing just up around this E9 when that part came around. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something and I hope you'll check out this video to keep learning. And by the way, I'll be back here next Tuesday for another Acoustic Blues lesson. Until then, practice smart and play on.